Please welcome Dana Martins of the New School and Somia Gotipati of NBC Universal to the stage. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay, we're both on. Hey, guys, nice to meet you today. Um, so this morning, um, uh, first of all, I'm Dana Martins, and this is... Somia Gotipati from NBC Universal. And uh, we worked on a project that really looked at um, blockchain and, and sort of the hype and the reality of media applications. And um, our other team members, um, Etienne and Thibault from NYU and uh, Chow from Columbia, were all part of this process. And so what we really wanted to understand was how might we leverage this, this new blockchain technology and, and the blockchain protocol and really start to understand how we can redefine some of the existing product potential in the media space and also to create new opportunities and new ideas about how we might interact with media in the future. And the first question is, well, why blockchain? Why blockchain for media? Why blockchain for anything? Uh, really, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty in the space right now. But I think the important part is that blockchains really have a potential to make every centralized process that we understand today, which is, which is most of them, um, every centralized process and activity and organization fully autonomous and to get rid of these intermediaries, to get rid of these, these sort of third parties. And this allows for streamlining and making efficiencies in, in business and in governments and in nonprofit. And um, why this is sort of important is that most of the institutions today really just act as third parties. They facilitate trust and they facilitate value among individuals. Um, you look at things like uh, clearing houses, you look at things like banks, you look at a lot of internet platforms all acting in this way. And the interesting thing is that blockchain potentially remove the need for the middlemen and they can actually allow for sort of these autonomous or smart contractual relationships and store information in tamper-free environments from corporations or from, um, from bad actors. And at the same time, it's very secure technology allowing um, to people not really not to worry about some of the modern sort of hacking concerns that we have today. Um, and finally, you know, there's a lot of market share and potential going into it. You know, in 2017, kind of the year of blockchain, we saw huge amounts of venture capital going in, even if uh, some of the market might be flagging uh, today in September 2018. And so the big question we had are, what, what are the risks and opportunities for media? And looking at the risks, um, what can blockchain really do to media if media as, as a sort of industry doesn't uh, start thinking about it and thinking about how they could bring it in? And really, you know, over time, today's media has been very, become very heterogeneous. Uh, excuse me, heterogeneous. And what this means is that we have artists who are creating content, and then we have aggregators and platforms who are really acting as a collection house and distributing that and, and handling the royalty payments. Now, the risk of blockchain is that blockchain can actually bypass the system entirely and endanger that media value chain from end to end if people don't think about new ways to get involved. So you can have new types of interactions with media. It can reset pricing. It can uh, shift the market power to copyright owners versus a distributor or an aggregator of media. And it can really redefine how we collect payments and even think about payments at the macro scale, at the micro scale, who's collecting them, um, and even autonomous anonymously collecting them without anybody involved at all. And at the end of the day, um, this can be a really big risk for media. But at the same time, we think that it can also be an opportunity for media. It can do something for media. And the problem with a lot of media today is that media is ubiquitously available in any format, and it's usually for free, or you know, we can all be honest here, um, you can usually find it for free one way or another you know, with grandmas login for Netflix or your sort of password sharing club with your friends or, and, you know, the, the pirate stream that you get. And this is a problem for media. It's a problem with quality and it's a problem with distribution. So blockchains can actually really support media in thinking about these new pricing options and guaranteed attribution, sort of automated royalty payments, and a lot of new and interesting things. And so what we did is, as we looked at all of these different use cases from like, you know, pretty standard to to today to these like far left field, you know, what is uh, interactive stories with tokens. And what we did is we mapped them across the media value chain to understand what's the most relevant for us to look at today. And we sort of decided that we wanted to look at monetization, um, opportunities, and, and sort of micropayments as, as, our, as our, what we now look at, these, these pricing options for paid content. And so what we did was we, we looked at this and we did a lot of research. And what we found from doing um, user research is that customers want flexibility. They want media 
um, in any format, when they want it, exactly how they want it. And they're going to pay for that. And so what we started to look at is how blockchain could support microtransactions. And, and we found that if you take microtransactions and you add smart contracts, what you start to do is get this concept of streaming money, this real-time payment for these digital assets. And this can de decrease transaction cost and um, make for easy accounting, which is really um, addressing a lot of the biggest challenges with a traditional micropayment system today. And so we created uh, a minimum viable prototype called MBC QuickPay, which is a Chrome plugin, a, a Chrome extension, or it could be a Mozilla plugin that would allow you to interact with media already existing on MBC properties, um, and also to allow for a content library for you to have more control and user rights management. And so I'm really quickly, um, you'll just sort of see it like loop through on the side. So for the microtransactions, you know, this sort of NBC QuickPay wallet would allow you to go to an NBC page. Um, and instead of maybe signing in with your cable provider, you would be able to uh, pay an NBC token to just purchase this individual episode or um, another small piece of media. Um, for the user rights management, we built a, a UX demo of a content library that would actually allow users to rent and sell media and marketplaces. Again, thinking about um, how we could capture value and allow for these peer-to-peer -peer and customer-to-customer -customer secondary markets while still um, giving the appropriate revenue to the distributor, which would be NBC in this case. And then finally, we wanted to understand how you could track this and aggregate it on the back end to streamline accounting. So we looked at a UX prototype of how you could track that as well. And I'm going to pass it to Samia for the future. Okay, thank you. So it's been a great experience for us working with the NYC Media Lab as well as the students from uh, you know NYU, Columbia, and uh, Parsons. Um, it is a it was a very you know two month long project. It was uh, really quick, and these guys uh, stepped up very quickly in just a really short. You know, when you work in a corporation, two months feels really short, right? <laughs> All the students, it might be too long, but. Um, so it re um, we just wanted to understand blockchain and re really get into the details of hype versus reality. What does it really mean to us? Um, you know, what are the opportunities for us? You know, how should we uh, think about it? And if this is going to be the disruption, what does it mean for us? And how do we take advantage of the opportunities and the potential it offers? So they have uh, really enlightened us on various aspects of it. Um, so now, after that, we felt like we learned quite a bit as a team, and now we're actually um, educating the rest of the uh, company as well with this information. So um, towards the end, the, so what are the next steps for us? While the blockchains offer uh, great potential and there is a lot of hype around it, there is a lot of investment flowing around it, based on where we are today, like let's say this year, um, we think, you know, it, blockchains will introduce a huge paradigm shift for the next uh, three to five years to come. However, before we jump into implementation, uh, there are considerations and limitations that we really need to think about before really jumping in. Some of the things that we felt like that are really critical for us to think about, or any corporation to think about, is you know public versus private blockchain. It really depends on the use case and the type of risk you want to take and the scalability you want to, um, uh, scalability issues. Considering all of those, you got to think about do you want to do private or versus public? Um, value fluctuation in token prices. For me, that was a big, uh, big concern because um, you know, how do you make a business plan if the cryptocurrency fluctuates? so widely on any given day. Uh, so that is something, so if your use case is tied to the pricing models and the cryptocurrency, then that becomes a bigger problem. So you gotta think about that. User adoption, ease of use, if everybody is offering a different kind of token, as a, from consumer point of view, you know, do you want, how many tokens do you want to have in your wallet? You know, it just becomes unwieldy after some point. So regulatory uncertainty and then also migration of, migration costs of your existing systems from, you know, from your existing systems to the new system. So there are a lot of considerations uh, that you have to think through before uh, jumping in. Um, so after all that assessment, we, you know, where we stand right now is we want to continue to develop an understanding of the technology, get a deeper understanding of different techniques and implementation methods and processes. Also partner with the blockchain ecosystem. You know, this ecosystem is evolving so rapidly. Um, so we want to partner with the ecosystem and see how it's evolving. And um, maybe even think of a media consortium where 
companies like ours and our peer companies come together and think about um, some kind of standardizations across the tokens and uh, um, user interfaces and things of that nature. Um, and also track industry development and uh, develop some kind of a competitive intelligence on media startups and you know working with the NYC Media Labs is uh, definitely a great opportunity for us. So we get it, we get we get to tap into that startup ecosystem, and then see which startups offer great potential and maybe partner with them or talk to them. So those are the kinds of things that we are thinking in the short run. And that's pretty much it. And I just want to leave you with a sort of riff off of. One of my favorite uh, authors and philosophers, uh, Bruce Sterling, when I think about the blockchain, is that you know the future is already here. Now it's you know it's mediaist and technologist and, and journalist working the space. It's really you know our job to distribute it, and, and I really think that's where blockchain stands and has a lot of potential. Thank you. Thank you.